I'm going to you, Senator Rennick. Hi guys, how are you going? Uh, look, my first question is in regards to the term funding facility and just what the terms of that funding mm. facility is. Uh, when the, uh, is it about the outstanding balance, I think is about 188 billion. And is that money that the banks have lent at a fixed rate when it was taken out? Or does that, is that move in line with the RBA cash rate? That, that money can be lent by banks or used by banks for a whole range of purposes. So some of it might have found its way into fixed rate loans. No, no, but when they borrowed it from you. Oh, when they borrowed it from, from us. RBA, what, uh, what's the rate of interest it's, they're paying? It's fixed. Some of it was fixed at the earlier rate it was taken out at, which is 25 basis points. Right. And, and uh, much of it's fixed at 10 basis points. Right, so they're borrowing <coughs> at 0.1 or 0.15 and they're now lending in it, lending out that money at, uh, you know, well, the various, the various rates. market rates. Yeah. Could be anywhere between the overnight cash rate of, what, 3.3% now, 3.25% now, um, up to 5 or 6%. Yep, something like that. Yeah. So in regards to when they park, park it with the RBA, the overnight cash rate, cash rate, they're getting about a 3% margin on that. <laughs> the same money that you've lent to them, they now lend back to you and that's quite a, that's basically free, a free gift to the banks, isn't it, on behalf of the Australian taxpayer? Well. <laughs> I mean, it is a subsidy. It was intended to be because it was put in place, as um, the Deputy Governor suggested, during those dire uh, times what? of March 2020, when the intention was to provide low-cost funding and much of that low-cost funding was passed on to borrowers, including households, but also small businesses, in the form of low-rate low loans. But, any, but it, yeah, okay, thank you. So any money that's parked overnight, though, the RBA cash facility isn't actually being passed on, is it? It's, no. They're, they're actually no. creaming 3% no. off the top. I mean, they're borrowing at 0.1 and then they're making a 3% margin, so that's something like a 3,000% Yes, return. but I, I suspect yeah. much of it was lent out. Well, yeah. A, and, and earning uh, an I even mean, higher return for the banks. You know, that's something I think that, you know, the banks should actually, in my view, be made repaid uh, because I fail to see why they should be getting, you know, money at 0.1% while, you know, hardworking Australians are now, you know, copping it on the chin uh, in regards to their home loans. Um, anyway, I'll leave that as a statement. Um, I just want to pick you up, uh, Ms Bullock, on your <coughs> comment that fiscal policy uh, can add to demand. Uh, I would disagree with that statement as a generalisation. I think there's two types of fiscal policy. There's, there's obviously spending and consumption, which, yes, does add to demand, but there's also investment in building and production. Now, what we've had, uh, you know, as, as a result of, you know, a lot of the excess demand pent into the market with the $300 billion, uh, you know, that was spent throughout COVID, we've increased demand. We've had a supply shock from Ukraine and renewable malinvestment, et cetera. Okay, what you're doing at the moment through increasing interest rates so fast through qualitative easing or, or tightening now is you're reducing demand. So you're bringing on an austerity package, right, rather than, as I've, I've spoken to you before about this, Mr Kent, is that we need to be having a quantitative easing package that increases productivity and increases <laughs> supply. So, because we hear this all the time, that fiscal policy only ever adds to demand. I disagree with that. If we're, meant, if we're going to deal with supply side issues in this country, i.e. the lack of productivity, you know, through not enough dams, not enough power stations, roads, bridges, etc., shouldn't we be looking at a quantitative easing measure that is focused on building assets, sovereign assets, that are going to supply more essential services into the market that will actually drive prices down because of increased supply? So rather than adopt an austerity package through tighter, you know, and I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't raise interest rates, but I just don't think you should raise them as quickly. Wouldn't we be better off raising productivity and hence supply to offset that lack of supply because of the Russian, you know, war, Ukraine war or what other measures that we're facing? I, I, I can't disagree with, with that general premise. I think yeah. um, what I was basically talking about was um, fiscal policy that increases um, demand by uh, increasing consumption. Sure. And the other, the other challenge here, of course, is that um, we do have, in the infrastructure space, we do have supply constraints there as well. And, and we know that the federal government, the state governments, um, there's all the home building as well. There's, there's a huge pressure on construction at the moment, which is also increasing inflation. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so 
All I'm saying is that we just need to be um, nothing wrong with the idea that the government needs to look at um, infrastructure, infrastructure spending to increase productivity, but we need to be a little bit careful that the spending isn't directed into areas where there's already inflationary pressures and areas that impact particularly construction at the moment and also uh, consumption are likely to do that. Yeah, I accept that. Has, has the Treasury approached uh, the RBA since the new uh, government has been formed about forming an infrastructure bank designed to fund, uh, provide cheap capital? Uh, and I know you've just, you know, as I just demonstrated, you're providing cheap capital to the, the banks, um, but cheap capital, say, to state governments to help build dams and, and, and railways and power stations. No, we, I don't believe we've been approached, no. Okay, no worries, thank you.